Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. Our time for reflection leader today is the Reverend Thomas White of St Mary's Carlton in Glasgow. Presiding officer, members of the Scottish Parliament, winter is coming. I must confess this opening remark is there for the titillation of the millions of arguably the most popular fantasy drama of our present age. Perhaps more accurately, what I want to say is autumn is here. For many of us, our summer holiday will be a distant memory. Like many of the, my fellow Scots, it was the Mediterranean that was for me a source of healing balm and relaxation. I do confess that this year, on several occasions, I looked out over the blue waters, contemplating how, for so many others, this sea was not a source of leisure, but was their final frontier. It was a barrier to be crossed to deliver them from persecution and terror. Many of the world's great religions also experience the changing of seasons. The Christian calendar, so to speak, is no different. The words Advent, Lent, Easter Tide and Christmas Tide are familiar to those even out with this tradition. These seasons are peppered with feast days and saints days, such as St Andrew's Day, All Saints Day and so on. Tomorrow is the Feast of the Holy Rosary. For many outside the Catholic faith, the Rosary may simply be understood as the beads that Catholics use to pray. For Catholics, the Rosary is a powerful prayer tradition that focuses specifically on the events of the Lord's life and ministry, designed to help us in our vocation to follow the Lord. The date of this feast day was chosen specifically because it is the anniversary of the Battle of Lepanto in 1571, recalling when a coalition of European maritime states effectively prevented the Ottoman Empire gaining access to the Atlantic and thus the Americas, thwarting the invasion of Italy by a sultan who had already taken possession of Constantinople, the New Rome, and who had in fact already taken to himself the title the Emperor of Rome. The threat to Christian Europe was so great that Pope Pius V called for the recitation of the Rosary throughout all of Europe. Today, the stakes are just as high for those who would profess to be Christian. Europe's borders are drawing people, and the dangers to what remains of Christ the Christian fabric of this continent are very real. But it's not a threat born out of invasion, but indifference. If Europe demonstrates indifference to the plight of refugees, then the Christian heart will be torn from our nations with greater efficiency than the Ottoman force could have achieved. I serve also as chairman of St Margaret's Children and Family Care Society. In 2011, one single letter concerning a hypothetical complaint endangered the good work of this charity, as Oscar passionately but erroneously began to view our work as having nothing to do with faith. With the support of this parliament, the prevailing of common sense, the Scottish Charities Appeal Panel recognised and understood the nature of religiously inspired good works as protected by the European Convention of Human Rights. The practice of one's religion cannot simply be reduced to prayers and chants. In contemplating what we do at St Margaret's and the plight of refugees, there is some great resonance with the challenge placed upon us by Christ, as recorded in Matthew's Gospel. Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not minister to you? And then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Or as we read in St. James, religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows. The scope of this parliament might be limited in its powers when faced with international issues, but that does not stop it being a voice which resonates true to our heritage, and I praise the MSPs who have done so. Words are important and they have power. Often people of religious conviction are unable to act and effect change, 
and words need to suffice. These words have power and are often identified by another name, prayer. In respect to Europe, may this parliament and nation be like the leaven in the bread. May God bless our work. Thank you. The next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Jackie Bailey. To ask the Scottish Government when the Crown...